Evening. Nice to be with you all again. Uh, we all know what this is. It's part two, Third World War by David Yates and others, many others. Maybe I should read the others' names, which I think I should do. To be fair, David Hollingsworth, Claire Hollingsworth, Peabody, Gavin Wolf, Kurt Hubbard Beale, Chris Beauregard, Amy Osmulski, John Southern, Donna J. Hawkins Walsh, Deborah Marmoudier, Amish Space, Sandhurst Five, Matthew, David Allen, Mrs. Janet M. Wormsley Hemmer, me, I got my name wrong, Carl Halls, Halls, Carl Hallsfield, Just Some Guy, Linda Hicks, Just Spates Goat Farts, Tony the Fox, MC, John Graff, Carol Bennett, Patricia Cusswart, Richard Harbury, Betty Trees, Jeff Hooten, Paul Harvey, David Albert Yates, Paul Savile, Rob Wilde, Jaivir Barweja, Peter Simmons, Ash the Bash, Joseph Robbins, Deborah Swindles Yates, Leah, Leah, Kate Hun, Brandy Harvey, Kay Slater, and Amy Danks. Let battle commence. I'll carry on from, well, I'll just say a couple of words. In the 17th century, there was a massive surge by the Benedict monks to correct all books to fit the new ideas for the century, completely erasing all ancient knowledge and text. At that time, the years were written differently. When an event happened 300 years after Jesus Christ, they placed an I in front of the year, so I dot 300, for example. In the Middle Ages, there were two terms used for the Saviour Jesus Christ, Christos being one, and IISUS, Isis, being the other. There are many examples of years preceded with an I. To represent Isis, sometimes an X was used to represent Christos. Did they drop? A thousand years by changing the I into a one as they burnt all original books with library fires and they are doing it again so damn easy for them this time to alter the text when in digital format they even tell you they are burning the books again hence putting them on a Kindle, a fire starter. Food for thought, folks, as wars aren't won on the battlefield, but in the minds of men. That's where we ended the last part one. So I'll now continue. Now, the establishment had a subservient populace at their mercy within one generation and the stage is now set for total global domination, which brings the introduction of two very unsavoury characters who warrant a mention. Giuseppe Mazzini, Mazzini, M-A-Z-Z-I-N-I, and Albert Pike, I've heard of him, he's very evil. Pike was born December 29th, 1809, in Boston, Massachusetts. He was enticed into a certain dark, very sinister, a now very well-known secret society by Giuseppe Massini, and Pike said to be the founder member of the Ku Klux Klan was fascinated by the idea 
of a one world government and ultimately he became the head of this Luciferian conspiracy between 1859 plus 1871 he, Pike, worked out a military blueprint for three world wars and various revolutions throughout the world. These conspirators were never concerned with immediate success. They operated with a long-term view. The first two wars went virtually according to his script and we are living the third as I type. There are too many orchestrated events to mention in this short article, but another key plan, which affects everyone, is the Kalergi plan, K-A-L-E-R-G-I, Kalergi. Allergy plan. Most people that I have come across have never heard of it. They should have, because Richard von Kaldenhove Kalergi was the father member of the EU and in 1922 instigated the Kalergi plan, which was the dilution of all sovereign identity through the act of forced immigration. So the next time you hear someone yakking about immigrants stealing their jobs and such, ask them what or who do they think displaced those people in the first place and if they are aware of the Kalergi plan. If they haven't heard of or read the Kalergi plan, then they are not qualified to make comments. The establishment has an award known as the Charlemagne Award, which is given to recipients who have helped in the implementation of this insidious plan. The clergy plan, what is very revealing, is the list of names of who have received this award. Here are but a few. 1950, I was four years old. Well, I no, I was older than that. 1946. Yes, I was four. Sorry to interrupt. Richard von Cowdenhove Kalergi. Wait for this one. This will shock you. It is shocking me. 1963, Edward Heath. And there's allegations about him that have never been proven, I don't believe. And he's one of the many that have got away with... Uh, even posthumously being accused of uh, uh, abusing children, boys. Hmm. 1972, this has shocked me. Roy Jenkins, this doesn't surprise me, the next one. I've heard plenty bad things about him. Henry Kissinger, this one doesn't surprise me either. The Iraq war we should never have gone into, but this one... We couldn't wait to get into it. I wonder why. And I'm not against Labour either. 1999, Tony Blair. This doesn't surprise me. 2000, Bill Clinton. This one, yes, I'm not surprised. 2006, Jean-Claude Juncker. This one doesn't surprise me either. 2008, Angela Merkel. This one I don't know at all. 2014, 
Herman Van Rompuy, R-O-M-P-U-Y, Van Rompuy. Wow, this shocks me, totally, totally shocks me. But I've always had funny feelings about this figure head. I mean, I, after St. John Paul II, nobody could, uh, and even Benedict was a, uh, okay, was a, a theologian. Um, or I haven't said who it is who's shocking me. Um, 2016, Pope Francis, go figure. At the time that he came to power, there were accusations that he was a Freemason but as a Catholic a practicing Catholic my lips are sealed because what I don't know I can't say anything about but I'm not surprised he's on this list let's put it like that and oh oh gosh I'm really shocked and oh how could I forget back in 1956 I was 10 Sir Winston Churchill the man who bankrupted Britain and ruined the British Empire. Why is that? And everybody loved him, didn't they? Or were under the thumb. Jenny Jerome, Churchill's mother, was Jewish. I never knew that, although I read about him. It didn't sink in. And under Talmudic law, that makes him also a Jew. Well, I do know that much. I do know to be a Jew, you need to have a Jewish mother. He was financed by a group of industrialists and bankers. Former politicians group called, I've heard of this, The Focus, in 1936, consisting of 40 members or so, they funded him. He was a bought and paid for puppet. In point of fact, Churchill was such a drunk that when ordered the genocide of Dresden, which had not a single military site, was pissed beyond compass mentis. He got so pissed that the infamous speech that we all believe to be him was in point of fact Norman Shelley speaking as Winston was too intoxicated to speak. Norman Shelley was a voice over on a kids radio broadcast and was the best Churchill impersonator at that time. I kid ye not! So the point of all this is that we have owners and those owners are operating a slave system. When you comprehend that, all will then make sense and only then. These owners have used us to create our own demise as we have served our purpose, done their bidding for them through acts of war against our own cousins and now virtually all of us are surplus to requirement as we get in the way of the big idea. Don't dismiss this. I advise you to check back on all these things I've just read. I'm sure you can find those facts for yourself and then you'll know. You will know your own finding because I intend to take, take this book apart and do my research on these people. But some of the names, I'm not surprised and I'm not shocked because I've, heard, I've learned other things about them other than what is written here including Pope Francis. God forgive me, but you're my God. <laughs> you understand. The gatekeepers of this ancient system have also served their purpose. The royals? I'm not saying a word. I've got the Queen's picture there from 2012. I organised a party in 2012 in Manchester for her 
60 years and saw her in Manchester. But, but the Queen has done a great job being Queen. But apart from that, I've got nothing else to say about the royal family. Nothing. But the Queen has done a great job. I stand by that. I think the royal family is due to end with her death, actually. Uh, there's no more worthwhile anybody's there apart from William. And who knows, um, he might not even want a job. Let me go back. The gatekeepers of this ancient system have also served their purpose. The royals, parliament, judiciary. Hmm. The whole system is being very finely tuned and replaced with AI, artificial intelligence. We are being steamrolled into a fascist dictatorship globally surveillance capitalism is unimpeded by law look how they just gave power away at the moment our sitting parliament have no power they gave it away for over covid19 remember that i'm just reminding you all we do not have an elected parliament controlling anything at the moment. They're being dictated to by outsiders. I watched them give away the power. I heard the arguments live. And they were saying that that's a long while, two years. Can you give us assurances? Give us assurances. They still went ahead with it. They still rejected their power. There is no one in power at the moment. No one, no one's controlling us at the moment. We've given that power over with the laws that they made at the beginning of this lockdown. Look that up. This is awful. And it's true. As it is new, there are no laws in place against it. The robber barons harvesting our data know this. It gives them tremendous power and control of you without you even knowing destroying your self-determination the data that you willingly give them via every transaction or accounts held isn't enough they harvest your every action post and movement you need to prepare because it's over. The world as you knew it will never be the same again. Not while this tyrannical oligarchy are allowed to run amok as they have done for millennia. The emperor truly has no clothes. Do you remember that story? That's the situation now. Only the little boy said, Mummy, he's got no clothes on. Only the little boy. Everybody else was cheering and saying how wonderful he looked and he was stark naked. That's how we are. On. True, the emperor truly has no clothes on. These people are beyond insane. And yes, they do have agendas, agendas that the sleeping masses will succumb to. If you're reading this book or actually listening to this book, I am sure that by now you are aware of the oligarch's main agenda of depopulation. That's you and me, especially my, our age group. They want us all done with. They don't want to keep paying pensions and what have you out, what we paid into. They don't want it. They want us gone. We're a waste of space because we're not working. We can't be a robot. By now, you're aware of the oligarch's main agenda of depopulation by any means they deem fit. 
the gloves truly are off folks and we collectively need to sharpen our pencils to stand any chance of survival we are being attacked on every front imaginable maybe that list is for another article but if this is new news to you then allow me to direct you to research the georgia guidestones the georgia guidestones these people are so serious about their agenda that they've placed a stone monument to it and it is in perfect solar alignment this was back in 1980 that's when i became a football referee i was also a courier on a motorbike in london they've gained a head start on us i can only suggest that it is of paramount importance that you look up the military documents they are called silent weapons for quiet wars owning the weather by 2025 and agenda 21 which we often hear about on the internet but nobody really understands it or takes the trouble to research and investigate what uh, because it's commonplace word agenda 21 look it up which is the agenda for the 21st century and it is said they want agenda 21 implemented by 2030 and i kid ye not on that too i'm just a layman says david and if I can figure all this out then, so can you. All you need to do is turn the TV off. Please note I don't have one, I don't want one and I haven't had one in years because I knew they were liars, all of them and I don't want to be brainwashed. You can find out news and information. It's not difficult. You don't need the television to do it. And stop allowing yourself to be distracted with mindless bullshit and learn the art of discernment it will save your life it's imperative in this world of relentless deceit that's all that i did me too david then i replaced that time and relentlessly researched the mystery of us a fascinating subject to say the least and a very worthwhile investment in yourself look up these documents and events as to obtain your own point of reference as we are on the precipice of monumental changes and harsh times which will require your full attention as to enable you to survive and protect yourself and your loved ones we are now in a tyrannical dictatorship so please 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 find your purpose as we so desperately need your help and support on the ever increasing front line i would like to take this opportunity to personally thank David and Debbie Yates and don't forget who this reader is it's Hollingsworth I'll just make sure I'm telling you the right name because I've 
David Hollingsworth. It's still his piece of good writing, I must admit. For their continued efforts and support through these difficult times and to all that have made the effort, and that's quite a number of us, to contribute to this vital documentation of these desperate times that we all now find ourselves enduring. Namaste. May peace be with you all. Kiss. Failure is part of the journey. Don't tiptoe through life, hoping to make it safely to death. There are no problems, just lessons. Everything you own at the time of death belongs to somebody else. Instead of waiting for your ship to come in, swim out to it. Everything you can lead yourself if you choose to do so. Our barriers are within ourselves. Respect yourself and who you are and the respect of others will naturally follow. Our society may appear to be free on the surface, but if truth be known, mankind is far from free. He's simply free range for the world of modern times is a very controlled place. Unfortunately, there is no key to the universe. No key at all. Fortunately, there was never a lock on it to start with. Use your mind. If you want to defeat an enemy, bring up his children, oriental wisdom, those that can make you believe absurdities can make you commit atrocities. Voltaire, he was French. Our mind is of three categories. What we know, what we don't know, and what we don't, we don't know. Not knowing is unfortunate, but not knowing that we don't know is tragic. Be strong. You never know who you are inspiring. Take risks. If you win, you will be happy. If you lose, you will be wise. Life is risky. None of us get out alive. That's how risky it is. So don't die wondering. The world is made up of words. And if you know those words that the world is made up of, you can make of it whatever you wish. Your future begins with your next thought. Be your greatest version. Freedom is your birthright. Enlightenment is knowing how much you don't know and to be conscious that you are ignorant of the facts is a great step to knowledge. Happiness is what you are seeking. So let yourself off the hook and go for it. If your life is so crappy right now that anything is worth the risk, do what you like doing and create your own reality. Life is trying to win without losing constantly. This is all there is. The path comes to an end at the parsley. 
Master the art of being yourself. We are all artistic, expressions of uniqueness, art form in itself. There are two ways to be fooled. One is to believe what is not true. The other is to refuse to accept what is true. Lead by example in all that you do. A PIG, acronym person in government who intends to perjure their oaths. HARP, H-A-R, H-A-A-R-P, High Active Auroral Research Program, capable of generating over a billion watts of microwave energy. A weapon of war is a microwave. It pushes the ion sphere back and hence causes extreme weather, earthquakes, etc. Direct solar radiation to desired targets by causing a plasma cloud in the ion sphere. It acts like a mirror. Rise like lions after slumber in unvanquishable number. Shake your chains to earth like dew which in sleep had fallen on you. As ye are many and they are few. Council on Foreign Relations. The CFR was founded in 1921 by none other than David Rockefeller. Yours faithfully, with a heavy heart and a low brow, by David Hollingsworth. Please safeguard this knowledge. It makes you gatekeepers of the truth. The next section says voting. So look guys, this is 32 minutes. That's long enough to you to have to listen and digest all of that. I'm gonna stop here and I, if I can, I'll do one more recording and then leave the rest to day by day, bit by bit, till we get through this. And um, I can assure you, I'm not gonna read it until I read it to you because it's all too much for my little brain. <laughs> Have a good night and God bless you. And I hope your books are on the way to you. <laughs> Speak to you soon.